Hey, what's up everyone? My name is Charles and in this video we will be creating a simple React app which have this kind of an bar and uh, we have links on our right hand side and a logo on the other side. This app will also be mobile responsive so when I enter mobile mode we will have a menu icon appears on our left hand side and the links that were here disappears and when I click the menu icon a side navbar strikes in with our links here and it also have a close icon here and uh, we have a backdrop here which is between the previous navbar and our side navbar and when I click the cross icon it crosses our side navbar and also when I click the backdrop it also crosses our side navbar I will be using a uh, react and material icons library to include our menu icon and our close icon and uh, in case you want to access the source code I will include uh, the source code in my github repository I will leave a link at the description section below so that you can easily access the source code and uh, in case you want to support my channel you can subscribe to my channel or donate to my PayPal account or also you can join my patreon account and in case you have any questions, you can find me on Twitter or Instagram. So let's have some fun. So I created a new React app and this is what we currently have. The first thing that I want us to do is to create this uh, top navbar and then we'll continue from there. So I'm going to create a new folder in SLC and I'll call it components. Inside this folder, I'll also create another folder. I'll call it layout. And this is where we will place all our nav files or components, okay? So layout will contain generally the layout of our navigation. And uh, in case we have images or like a logo, we'll place it in this folder. So I'll create a new component now and I'll call it uh, nav bar dot dot jsx or you can call it dot js if you want i'm just pressing dot jsx for my code formatter to uh, properly format my code okay so uh, i will create this component as a functional component because we will not be managing any state in this component so i'll import react from react And then const navbar uh, will be equal to here you can accept props but uh, in this case I will be using the structuring and I'll show you how we'll do that and then this is an arrow function which we return some JSX so return uh, for now I will press uh, nav tag and then I will export down here export default navbar I will be having uh, several divs for our nav items and the first div from the left is that uh, menu icon so I will add a div for the menu icon and uh, I'll add this icon later. I'll show you how to add this icon later. But for now, I'm just uh, placing the word menu as a placeholder. And then the second item will be a logo. This is also just a placeholder, but you can place an image here. And then I'll add a single div here. And this div, I'll be using it to space, uh, to create a space between our items the menu and the logo on the left uh, between those items on the left and our links on the right okay and I'll show you how uh, this one will work and then the last uh, div will hold our navigation items okay so I will add an ordered list for our navigation items For in this case, we'll just use two uh, items. 
that is dashboard you can place uh, a link here but uh, i'm using dashboard just as a press holder okay and then li again services this can also be a link okay so i will save this file and you can see that my code formatter has auto formatted this code and in case you are curious the formatter i'm using is called uh, plitia and the configuration is that it formats uh, the code on save okay and then i want now to import my navbar here at our uh, app.js so import navbar from uh, this uh, folder navbar is in which folder layout folder and layout folder is in component folder so let's navigate there slash component slash layout slash now we get uh, to our navbar there and i'll uh, put it just at the top of this div which hold our content so uh, navbar i'll close that one then i can now save this file head back to our browser and see if that one have worked and there we go now our navigation items are, are nicely displayed there now what we need to do is to add styling in this navigation uh, bar so i'll go back to our component navbar.jsx and i'll be adding several uh, class names here which i'll work with the first class name will be uh, navbar which is a styling for the whole navbar so navbar the second uh, class name is for our menu so i'll add a class name and i will call it nav icon because this will be just a menu icon nav icon and then for our logo i'll add a class name and i will call it uh, nav logo okay nav logo and then this one which i said will be used to separate it between these two uh, sections i will add also a class name and uh, this one i'll just call it nav space because it's just uh, creating a space between uh, those two sections so i'll call it nav space and then uh, i'll add a class name for this div and i will call this class name uh, nav items so the next thing that we need to do is to add a css file and i will be using a single css file for the whole uh, layout uh, design so you can add a css file for each component but in this case i'm just going to use one css file uh, for simplicity or just my choice so layout dot css and uh, now in this css file we can target uh, particular class names so let's first style the whole navbar so i will target dot navbar and uh, what i'll do here we want our navbar to be on the top left corner so i will left add a uh, styling for left zero and then uh, top to be also zero we want uh, our navbar to occupy the whole width okay so i'll give it a width of a hundred percent i want it uh, to have a particular height of about 50 px and uh, i want to display items on the uh, uh, side by side so i'll save this one and show you what we have first okay so our styling have not been applied and uh, the reason is because we have not imported our css file here okay so let's do that i will import our css file here and they are on the same folder so so it's on the same folder layout the css 
So I will save this and uh, let's check again. Okay, there we go. There's no much change. Let's add some styling. Like, uh, let's add a background color. A background color. I want it to be gray. And we can add a color for our text to be white. And then what else? I'll make this one darker. So I just hover on the gray and then it bring this uh, pop up so that I make it darker. And I'll save this one now. Let's head back and uh, this is now what we currently have. I will add a display of flex. And uh, I'll make this uh, number to be fixed. So position, I want it to be fixed so that it doesn't scroll with uh, other content. So I'll save this and see what we have. And uh, I want to align these items. You can see that they are uh, out of this nav, nav bar and this is uh, at the top. So I want to align those items to be at the center. So I will add a styling of align items to be center. And uh, let's see what we have. Okay, now this is now better. So let's separate these items so that dashboard and services to be on the right, menu and logo to be on the left. So this is where we are going to make use of this particular div here. You can see nav space. So let's target nav space and add a styling down here. I'll add nav space. And uh, remember to place this dot nav space. And what I'll do is place a flex of about 0 0.9. So this will occupy much of the space that is between those two items, th between that uh, flex box. So I will save this one, head back to the browser. And uh, now this is nicely done. Okay, now let's style these links, which are uh, general divs, but you can place real links. So the first thing is that I will target these links, which are in nav items, I guess. So dot nav items is the, is the class we give that we give that div nav items. Okay, we target the UL. Okay, so as let me show you. So we have this class name nav items. We target our UL tag. And uh, yeah, let's first target that one. So I'll add a display of flex so that they are side by side. I will add, uh, I'll remove the list style. So list style to be none. And I think that's all we need to do for this particular uh, styling here. I'll head back to the browser. And you can see now they are side by side and there are, are no any list style. So let's uh, kind of separate them. Okay, so we will target now our L tag. So down here, dot nav items. And then we target UL, then we target LI. We add a padding left right. So padding of uh, zero and then 5px so this will add a padding of left right of 5px i will save this and uh, head back to the browser and now we have at least a space between uh these two okay so we want when we hover the cursor changes and also the color of the text the text changes so let's target our li items with a hover okay so dot nav items UL then LI we add hover and what we want to do is to change the cursor to be um, pointer and then the color to be you can use any color I'm going to use yellow and that's all we have to do I will save that one and go back to the browser 
and uh, this is now working nicely okay so let's now style our menu here and the logo i'll head back to our layout.css we target the menu and the logo and i want to target them systematically so just after navbar styling i will target nav icon okay so let's do that just after the navbar we target now down here the nav icon so dot nav icon and uh, what we want to do is to add a cursor when we navigate to that particular icon a cursor of pointer and uh, we want to add a margin on the left okay left right so let's a padding that is so let's add a padding of left right of uh, zero and uh, five px just like we did uh, down here i will save that one and head back to the browser now you can see that there's a space and this is now uh, displaying a pointer I, uh, a pointer the cursor is a pointer but now let's tell the logo so i will target our logo which is nav logo the class name that we gave it so dot nav uh, logo we add a cursor now also of pointer because usually the logo uh, navigates the user to the home page or uh, dashboard something like that and then we want to add uh, we want to add a spacing between the menu and the logo uh, a good space between those two so we can add a margin left a margin left of about uh, 0. Point, uh, or rather 3 rem okay 3 rem this is uh, rem is actually larger than uh, px so this will add a uh, good spacing here between the menu and the logo so you can see that now this is working nicely so we now have our navbar which is fixed but there is a problem somewhere i don't know if you noticed it but we no longer see our content remember we had some content here at our app.js we had this particular content saying hello react devs so this is because and um, we pressed the position of the navbar to be fixed so to display this content we can add an inline styling here so i will add a style of uh, this is this will be a javascript object and we can add a margin top okay margin margin top and because we are in javascript now we are using camel casing here you see margin top and then remember we created a height of our navbar to be about 50 px right so we can add a margin top of about 60 px for so that our content can be clearly visible and we need to place this one in uh, quotes that way and we don't need this one what we can do is to add a comma here and add a styling of margin heft so that from the left we had we have a literal spacing for our content and uh, we can add a left of about 9px i guess will be fine so i will save this one and head back to the browser and uh, nothing is happening okay it's what each it is refreshing and now we can see our content here so this is nice so we have our navbar the next thing that we will do is to add uh, an icon here a menu icon here and also add now a side navigation bar so that uh, when you click this icon we can now see our navigation bar okay so let's make uh, this menu to be an icon i'm going to use the menu icon and i'm going to use uh, this particular library materialize css icons okay we go to icons okay so in order to use uh, material css icons we need to add this link at our head section in our html file so the first thing we are going to do is to uh, look for this link and just copy it 
head back to our code editor and in our public folder look for index.html and I'm going to add uh, this link just before our title here so I'm going to paste that link here and then I'll save it and I need to fix an open tag there I missed it when copying it so I'll save it again now let's see how this uh, icons work when i scroll down you can see there are a lot of icons okay and uh, i'm going to look for the menu icon that i want and it's actually called menu so if i click uh, Control f and it bring this uh, search search uh, bar here and search for menu you can see now we have this menu icon here okay so this is this menu icon is what I want to use and uh, the way I will use it is using a class name I will use a class name of material icons and then the name of the icon here with this uh, i tags okay so let's do that so I will go back to our nav bar where we have menu I will cancel that add an i tag there and then inside between these two i tags i add the name of the icon which is menu in small caps and i also add a class name of material icons that way so i will save this head back to the browser uh, at our react app so now there we go we have our icon here nicely displayed so that's how we use the material uh, the material css icons so uh, the next thing is adding a side nav bar here and that's what we are going to do and uh, in our layout folder add a new component and I will call it side nav bar dot jsx. Let's create this component. So import React. From React. I will use uh, our CSS file in this component also so I will import our layout dot CSS here layout because they are in the same folder layout dot CSS and then now I can create a functional component we will not be managing any state here like in our navbar so const now side nav bar will be got a functional component which which will return jsx let's add a wrapping nav here and then uh, in this now we will have uh, several list items which will hold our links so let's create an ordered list so the first list item will be a closing icon so we will add a similar icon uh, as the menu so we add an i tag with a class name of material icons and uh, our icon name will be close so this will display an x icon which uh, we will use to close our side navbar okay 
and uh, down here let's add another li which will hold uh, a link for the dashboard so this is just a placeholder you can place a real link here and then after this we add another one for the services okay so let's also add another class name here for studying the whole uh, nav so I'll add a class name of uh, said navbar So we will use this class name to spell this whole nav or, or this whole uh, side nav bar. Okay. Also, remember to import uh, the layout.css here. I will save this file. I will head uh, to our app.js and import that component here. So import uh, side nav bar from components and then layouts and then we reach to our side nav bar there so we can now use our import here after the nav bar we can now use said nav bar okay that way and uh, I will save this and see what we have So you can see there is an added content here, dashboard services. So let's tell this one so that uh, it looks better. We go to our layout.css and target our side navbar class. So dot side navbar and add some styling. The first thing we want it to have a height, a height of 100%. And then we can add a background color <coughs> so background I want it to be black we can add text color to be white and then uh, we want it to be position uh, fixed fixed position so position fixed and we want uh, it to be above uh, the previous nav bar. So we want it to be above this nav bar. So both have position fixed. What, how we can uh, position this at the top of that is using the, the Z index. So I will add a Z index here and I will place it to be about uh, 300. So we will also have a backdrop which will also have a, Z, a Z index. So we can set uh, the backdrop Z index to be about 200 so that it will be between this side nav bar and that uh, the top nav bar. So let's continue here. What else can we add? We want it to be at the top left corner. So I will add top to be zero and the left to be zero. We can uh, now set a width. So let's place a width of about uh, 200 px. And I think this is uh, good enough. I will save this file, head back to the browser. And now you can see that we have this side nav bar. We can reduce this uh, color black a little bit. So I will make it uh, grayish. Uh, right there and I will save now head back to the browser and this uh, looks much better now let's tell our list items you can see we have now a close icon there which we will use to close this side nav bar a dashboard and services so these are list items let's uh, style them so we will target the unordered list here so dot side uh, nav bar we target the ul item so when i come here you can see we have this class name said navbar and then we target the ul okay so let's tell that 
the first thing that we want to do is to remove uh, the styling so list style we set it to none and then uh, we want to display flex so display flex and then we want a flex direction to be a column so the column will set the flex direction to be a uh, downward okay so flex direction to be a column and uh, i think this is uh, good enough i will save this one head back to uh, the browser and now we don't have that styling and uh, they are still aligned the same so another thing we want to do is to create a spacing between uh, these items and also to set some hover effect okay so let's target our li item okay so say dot side nav bar ul and then li we set uh, the margin uh, bottom to be about uh, the 20 px now let's add a hover effect <coughs> So dot side nav bar again, ul, li, and then hover. So when we hover, we want to set the cursor to be a pointer. And also we want to change the text color. So we change the color to be yellow. Okay, I will save this now. Head back to the browser. And now we have a spacing between these navigation items and we have hover effect okay okay the next thing we want to do is to add a backdrop okay so that when you also click the backdrop it crosses our side nav bar let's create that component here new file i will call it backdrop dot jsx and this will contain only a single uh, div tag. So let's do this, import React. From React. And then uh, we want to also import our CSS file. So import layout. Dot CSS this we will not be managing any state so I'm creating a simple functional component const uh, backdrop is equals to we return a div here so return a div with a class name of uh, I will just call it the class name backdrop that way and uh, I will cross this div because it's, it is just a single tag there so let's export this backdrop down here export default backdrop let's import our backdrop at our app.js so uh, we will import the backdrop here import a backdrop from components slash layout then we get to our backdrop there let's use this uh, import down here okay i will save this file now now let's tell our backdrop layout.css we target the backdrop so dot backdrop 
we want to have a backdrop that occupies the whole page so let's set the height to be 100 percent let's set the width to be 100 percent let's set a transparent background we want to set an opacity which will make it transparent so the red green and blue will be zeros and then we set an opacity of about uh, 0 0.3 okay another thing we want it to start from the top left corner so we set top to be zero i forgot that uh, semicolon there and then left to be also zero we want it to be fixed position so position fixed and uh, let's set now a z index that will make it to be a uh, top of the top nav bar but below the said nav bar i will save this file head back to the browser and now you can see that we have this uh, grayish transparent uh, backdrop so the last thing that we are going to do is to make uh, everything functional we are going to add state in our application so that when you click this uh, cancel or close icon it closes our side nav bar and when you click the backdrop it also closes our side nav bar and also when you click that menu icon it opens our side nav bar okay so far so good so let's introduce state in our, our application so that we can close and open our side nav bar by clicking those icons and uh, to do this we need to add state uh, in this app.js because this is where we have access to all our other components and you can see this is currently a functional component so I will convert this one uh, into a class based component so that I can add state and uh, so I will import component at the top here and uh, I will remove this function here and use a class so class app extends component and uh, in a class based component we must have a render function so I will introduce a render function here so render And then move this uh, return statement at the top here. Okay, that way. I will save this one and see if our application still works correctly. <clears throat> and there we go. So we have converted this uh, app.js into a class based component. Now I can add state here. And the state I want to, to add is to just check if uh, the sidebar is open or not. So it will be a boolean. So state will be equal to, I will say a side bar open. And I will set it uh, by default to be false. Okay. So by default, it is false. So if it's false, the sidebar is closed. And if this uh, sidebar is open, so the state of sidebar open will be true. So I will add several uh, function here in order to handle uh, the opening and closing of this sidebar. The first function will be handle open. So this will set the state to be true okay so this 
dot set state and I want to set the state when you call this function we will set a sidebar open to be true okay so this dot set state we add our sidebar open here to be true okay that way now let's handle the sidebar close so if it's open it's true and if it's true we need to find a way of changing it back to false so that we can cross that sidebar so i will add another function here and i will call it handle uh, this time i'll handle close and in this case i will set the state to be false if we call this function we set the state back to uh, the default state so this dot set state sidebar open to be false okay that way so we want to pass uh, these functions into our uh, particular items like the menu item to open this uh, to open our side nav bar and the close icon we pass this handle close cross the side nav bar okay so down here we will check if the sidebar is open or closed and uh, <coughs> we display these items depending on whether it's open or closed and I will be using a uh, tunnel operator which is uh, will be in JavaScript object so I will check this dot sidebar open so if this is true it will display some JSX and uh, to, to display multiple JSX we need to place this one into uh, a single div single wrapping uh, element and I will use a div so div inside this div this is a wrapping div for what we want to display inside this wrapping div I want to display these two component if it's true we want to show the side nav bar and the backdrop if it's false we want to uh, if it's false we don't want to show them so I will cut this and then I will paste it here inside the divs so these divs are just wrapping our uh, multiple components here and then if it's false we want to display null we show nothing we don't show whether there is uh, these two elements okay so I will save this first and we can see the state at the moment is false so we should not see the backdrop and we should not see the side nav bar so I will check here and you can see they have disappeared and if I go back here and uh, manually control the state set it to true here I will save this one head back to the browser and uh, wait for it to refresh okay something must be wrong okay I forgot to place this dot state here so this dot state I will save this one and uh, head back to the browser and now you can see when the state is true we can see this one and now to make sure that it works actually because we had a retro error there I'll set this back to false I will save it head back to the browser and uh, wait for it to refresh and we no longer see it because uh, the sidebar open is false now we want to control this dynamically by a click so the first thing we pass our handle open function in uh, navbar because that's why we have our menu to open the side navbar so I will pass an open uh, plop this is a plop now and I will pass it to as a reference to handle this dot handle open okay so when we click open it opens that side navbar I will save this head to our navbar now right here 
and in between here okay and right here I will destructure the prop you can use uh, props dot open but I just want to structure open I can now access open directly and where we have our menu I want to add an on click event okay so in this div in this particular div I can add an on click event so on click and this on click will uh, access or it will access open and open it this on click will access open and remember open references uh, handle open and what handle open does is to set the state to true so i will save that head back to the browser and now when i click this one it should open our side navbar so i click that one and this works now right now let's handle this one for closing our side navbar so i will pass the close the close we added it on our side navbar here so i will pass close here and what close will do is to access handle close so this dot handle close and uh, this one should be a uh, dot there a period and then uh, I cross that one so let's go to our uh, side nav bar now I will save this one go to our side nav bar here so when we click this li item we want to close that uh, side nav bar so I will add an on click event on click and this on click will access the block which is uh, we have set the reference to be close and remember to destructure it here so I'll destructure the post there to be close okay so I will save this one head back to the browser let's open our side nav bar now now it's open when we click this one it should close and there we go now this is working okay and another thing now we want to do is when you click our uh, this backdrop, it also crosses our side navbar. And uh, what we are doing is just passing this reference here, cross reference. We pass it to our backdrop. I save it there. I will save uh, that uh, file. I go to our backdrop, and uh, when we click on our backdrop we need to close that uh, particular side nav bar so i will destructure close here and add uh, an on click event on this div which represent the whole backdrop so on click <coughs> this starts with a capital letter here so on click will be equal to close I will save this file now and head back to the browser wait for it to refresh when I click this one and click the backdrop it crosses the side nav bar when I click that one and click this one it crosses the side nav bar this is now working and uh, now what we want to do is to add a nice transition right here okay when we click this one you see it's like popping up and what we want to do is to add a transition so that it strides in nicely and strides out when you close it okay and how we are going to do this we are going to use controlled classes in our nav bar here okay so this nav bar i won't uh, control it in this uh, ternary operator but i'll display it outside here and then use css to open and close uh, the side nav bar using controlled classes okay so let's do this i will remove this from our check here and display it at the bottom here so currently we are passing one reference which is close and we need to pass a reference to our state which will help us to close and open our side nav bar so i'll add a reference to the set and i'll just call it sidebar open and uh this will target the state so this dot state 
dot side navbar or a sidebar open i mean sidebar open this is the state and we are uh, passing a reference to be sidebar open still and uh, i will save this file and go to our now uh, the side navbar and we will add controlled classes here first let's restructure that uh, state so sidebar open and uh, what we will do is to add a check so at the top here we create a variable so let uh, a variable called classes so this will help us to control this class but this particular class here so let classes be equal to this class here okay so i will copy that and paste it here and then we check if this is true or false so if sidebar open so if it's true what we want to do is to change these classes to, to, to add another class okay what we want to do is to add another class in our variable classes so if it's true if this is true we set the classes to be okay sidebar side navbar and add another class here open so if it's true we have an extra class if this is false we still use the uh, previous class that we were using now we can use our classes here which will uh, point to this particular classes and this will be now a javascript object so i add our classes there okay that way now let's add a styling when our side uh, our side nav bar is open so we go to our layout.css and uh, we go to our side nav bar just at the bottom here when the side nav bar is open so side nav bar dot open when this is open we want to add a, a transformation okay so transform and then we translate along the x axis so translate x so the x is the horizontal axis we want this one to be zero so this is by default this is open when it's zero is open and uh when it's closed is when we display this normal class here so we also add a transform here so down here transform and then translate along the x axis and this one now will be uh, negative 100 okay negative 100 percent now this one will be hidden okay and uh, we can now set a duration for transforming this uh the for transforming the side nav bar so we add a transition a transition we target this transform add a duration which it will take to completely open so i'll set this one to be 0 0.4 seconds now i will go back to our browser i will save this one go back to our browser and see if this works i will click open and close and you can see now it's translating it's threading in and out right so this is now working very 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 fine the last thing that we will do is to make this uh, mobile responsive so that when i enter mobile mode When I enter mobile mode, I want to hide our links here 
and when I enter desktop mode I want to hide this particular icon here so let's do this I will go at the bottom here and uh, what we are going to do is to use a uh, media query so at media when them we want to set now a uh, max width for our navigation items so max width here max width to be about uh, 7 or 2 px and then we add uh, a styling we target our nav items so dot nav items we want to display We want to display none. So there's no spacing between art and the media here. So what does this mean? When uh, the width is above 7 or 2 px, we can see our navigation items. And when it is below, uh, 7 or 2 px our navigation items is hidden and those particular navigation items are this one here so now let's control our uh, icon so I will set a media query here at media and then here I will set the minimum width mean width be about now 7 or 3 px and uh, I want to target the nav icon remember this is the class that we gave to that particular icon nav icon to be display to be displayed none so we don't see it so this means that uh, <coughs> when the width of the screen uh, exit, exits the 7 or 3 px we doesn't see this navigation item so the minimum width when it is below this one we can now see our navigation icon okay if it's above this we don't see our navigation icon so i will save this head back to the browser and uh, you can see now our navigation item Okay, sorry. You can see now our navigation icon have disappeared. We don't see it because it's above uh, 7 or 3 px. Now, let's enter mobile mode. When we are on mobile mode, we doesn't see these links here. Eh? Because uh, they are the, the screen size have decreased below 7 or 2 px. And when I click now this particular icon, you can see now we have this navigation item on this side and uh, this is now working perfectly fine so that's it for this video if you enjoyed it and if you learned something please support my channel by subscribing if you don't want to miss out any video make sure you subscribe and thank you for watching